Yo, what's up guys? It's Yellowfin, and in this video, I am going to be going down the niche rare cards that I believe you guys should keep in Top Trash. So you guys kind of already know the drill, because this is the third installation of this type of series. I'm going to be going through my rares that I have had a good experience with, and that you realize they aren't really rares that are commonly known to be good, but then when you have them maxed out, you realize they're a pretty darn good car. So the first one on this list is the Acura CSX Type S. Now with these rares, a lot of them where rares are really commonly used is clubs, um, sort of like the Yellow Bird and the Nissan Challenge, and also the Challenges. Challenges are definitely where rares are also very useful in, and they get a lot of use. Now this CSX is a club car. It's an amazing front wheel drive car, especially for when you have the club requirement of Dragon City, because it is medium ground clearance. Also a decently lightweight, decently lightweight it has 472 races 81 percent win ratio 89 handling definitely helps that out a lot and it is a very useful one to have for the city streets track set the next car on this list is the rq39 mercedes-benz e220 this car i actually used in a snow event once and it beat the campaign epic mercedes on some snow trick but it's probably because it had etb but still there was such a large zero to 60 difference that was still pretty surprising and the reason why it stands out among other um, rare high RQ common car, not common, rare high RQ, rare, rare high RQ standard tire cars, there we go, is because it is rear wheel drive. While other common, uh, not com I keep calling them commons, other rares are front wheel drive. So this Mercedes having rear wheel drive on it actually helps it out a lot. Plus, it also has ADMRA too, which is pretty interesting to have on a rear-wheel drive standard tire car. So, it is definitely just a good all-rounder to have. Mine is at 320 days old. Well, that's not the stat I meant to say. 453 total races and a 73% win ratio. It's not too bad of an all-rounder to have in the rain. Another all-rounder I'm talking about that is good RQ saver is the Dodge Stealth. Used to be uncommon, not really a great car. Well, it used to be mediocre. Then it got buffed, and it was an incra crazily overpowered and common. And then it got moved to rare, and it kind of got forgotten. But it is still actually not too bad of a front-wheel drive car because it has low ground clearance. So it definitely helps you save a lot of RQ. Um, because of the 5.5 second 0 to 60 in the 86 handling. The 86 handling isn't really a strong suit of it. 86 handling is kind of meh for a front-wheel drive car. But 5.5 second 0 to 60 is not bad, especially using it on a fast circuit or a short drag it can definitely help you if you're playing front wheel drive times five club events that are lower rq where you need a rare or you need to just save some rq if you want to use some ultra rares or super rares the dodge stealth will definitely help you if it's on like a drag type track set the next car on this list is the rq36 super impreza because it is basically your budget nissan stegio the nissan stegio is an amazing car 85 handling and which makes it basically amazing because it has that 85 handling your Super Impreza is basically the 2RQ cheaper version of it. It's got 80 handling, so 5 less, but it is a bit faster to 60, and it's for 2 less RQ. Um, mine's got 85 race to 66% win ratio, but that's because I use it in a lot of events to help me save RQ. It's also a good car to use alongside your Nissan Stegia. You can use both of them, and they will definitely help out a lot when putting them on different track sets, because they both have their strong suits, with the Super Impreza being a bit faster. The Stegia will still probably win everywhere, though, but it's that's why it's your budget Nissan Stegia. It's 2RQ cheaper, so if you're tight on RQ, this one will definitely help you out quite a bit. Next car on this list is probably one of my favorite rares and one of my favorite cars in my garage as well, the Volvo C70 T5 2.3. And the reason I like this car so much is because it is low ground clearance. I've had this car for 557 days, 580 races, 72% win ratio. And the reason I like this car a lot is not because of the 77 handling, but it's because of the 5.6 second 0 to 60 in the 161 mile per hour top speed. Now that 161 mile per hour top speed is, oops, that is not the right car I meant to click on. I meant to click on this. The 161 mile per hour top speed is very good for, first of all, being a front wheel drive car, but then second of all, it has standard tires too. So it fits such a small niche of being a front wheel drive standard tire good zero to 60 really good top speed car that's also low ground clearance it's just such an amazing car when you need it for specific things that it is just really really good and i never see anyone that really has it maxed out but that's also why then i'm able to 
absolutely destroy people in events like that where or not events but like clubs where this car this type of car is needed where it's like standard tires and it's drags and it's low rq or it's um front wheel drive and it's drags and maybe it's rain for other track sets and it's like twisty like this is literally your perfect car for some track sets next car on this list is the car which i did accidentally click on the chrysler pacifica hybrid now the reason this car is good is because it is low rq with having good stats it's very heavy so it won't really win you quite a lot it'll lose you some surprising races actually but the reason it's low rq is because it's heavy and it's got that high top speed but when you're using it on races that don't need it to be heavy or don't care if it has low top speed then this is a very useful rq saver because it has 6.0 83 handling which is definitely very helpful in comparing it to lower rq front wheel drive standard tire cars let's just say the South Romeo 33 here it is 0.9 seconds faster at a 60 or like this honda legend as well like cars in its near category are like on a completely different area compared to the pacifica hybrid now the alfa romeo will probably beat it on a slalom test most definitely because it's got only weighs 848 but when it comes to different stuff the chrysler pacifica hybrid is definitely not too bad of an rq saver next car on this list is the rq30 Subaru leone because it has 81 handling <laughs> That's really the only reason it's on here, but also the reason 15 races, which isn't very many, but then 100% win ratio with that. And I've actually used this car in like club events and stuff. Well, it's probably only one club event since 15 races on it, but still 81 handling on an RQ30 4 wheel drive standard tire rare is not too bad. That is not too bad at all, especially like looking at, not that, but looking at the Subaru Legacy, the Subaru Leone has five better handling and isn't too slow to 60, so I'll probably beat it on most track sets against the Legacy. So Subaru Leone definitely is not too bad. Another car on here is the RQ32 BMW i3. This is a car that I use a ton. 321 races, 81% win ratio. I just used it in the ARC Challenge for the Italy, the Italian ARC Challenge. I use this car for some of the races. And it's just a great RQ saver, and it's got great 0-60. to 60. Now, 5.7 seconds 0 to 60 is definitely a strong suit, along with it having 76 handling, plus then the standard tires to go along with it. It's just a really good car for anything that's got a decently sized straight, like a twisty circuit, a hairpin road, um, mainly those two, I guess. Twisty circuit, hairpin road, G-Force test is not too bad at karting circuits, an amazing one, especially like the outdoor karting circuit, which is just karting circuit. That, it definitely shines in that track set too. Then, we have the RQ34 Citroen Zancia Activa V6, which is a medium ground clearance Citroen. Oh, I'm losing my voice all of a sudden, probably because I've been just talking so fast. Um, Citroen Zancia Activa V6. Now, the reason this car is good is because it's another front-wheel drive standard tire cars, medium ground clearance, but that's just because I had a good experience with using it in an event. This car helped me win a ceramic pack. And I do use it sometimes other than just that ceramic pack event. 476 races, 62% win ratio. It's just a pretty solid all-around low RQ car. Now, this is more getting on the more niche spectrum. Like, this was just a useful RQ saver I had. If you have good high RQ Citroëns, then this wouldn't be too bad of one to max out in case there's an event. Because usually Citroën events don't really give you too much of high RQ. So this one would be a good one to look out for if you do have a really strong Citroën high-end. Like, I have the Citroën GT, the Metropolis... And then some other ones. I can't really remember, though. And the last car on this list, besides the honorable bill mentions, is the MG Montego Turbo. Now, this one is on the list, even though it's kind of overshadowed. Now, 404 total races, 78% win ratio. Now, this car, unlike the Citroen Zancia Activa V6, this car is one I'd say look out for if you are a newer player. Because this car carried me through the campaign, pretty much, when I had this car. I had one... Prior to this, now this one's not as old, but I had one before, and on my old account as well. They both carried me through the campaign, and so I've got one maxed out too. It still gets used quite a bit, 404 races, 78% win ratio, and it's still one that you'll probably end up using in clubs quite a bit, looking at it like compared to the 306 Rally, car in a similar category. The MG Montego is 0.2 second faster to 60 and two better handling. Is it lighter actually? 1,084, 1,023, so it's a tiny bit lighter, but not much of a difference. And it's also an 80s car too, which is definitely a pretty niche aspect to have. So it is also a good one to have in challenges when they require 80s cars. 
So the MG Montego Turbo is also not too bad of one to look out. And now the two final honorable mentions I have on here. I've only got two for this one, which is the Honda Prelude Type S because it is a good dragster. It's got a pretty strong MRA for a front wheel drive car too. It's like your Dodge Stealth, but even more for the drags. You'll want to use it more on the drags. Well, the Dodge Stealth is more of an all-rounder. Honda Prelude is definitely your drag strip car. 105 races, 81% win ratio. I might even say 3321 if you want to, because 332 wouldn't actually be too bad of an upgrade for it, because this is a car that you will mainly be using on the drag strip. And the other car I have on here is the Ford F-150, which is getting on the much more niche end of things because of the rear wheel drive all surface tires. Won't really win you many off-road stuff, but when it's asphalt, all surface tires times five requirement in clubs, and you need to save some RQ if you want to drop your Porsche Cayenne in there, the Ford F-150 is the car for the job. Just throw it on the dry, and it won't lose you very many points because it can beat most super rares that are four-wheel drive all surface tires just because it's rear-wheel drive all surface tires, so then it's rare. Um, I've had it for 479 total races, 78% run ratio, and it is definitely one if you're looking for a niche club car to have for being a very specific club wreck, or also just road less taken too. It's still not really too bad of one to have. It won't lose you by too many points, but it won't really win. Actually, it does win quite a bit, but still, it's just not a bad car if you're looking on the niche end of things. And so yeah, that'll conclude it for the rares. We've just got super rares to go, and then that'll conclude the series. And maybe I'll do like another part like in a very long time in case I keep more rares. Or maybe I can do it like when a new update drops and then I'll do something like the niche best cars for this new update. So yeah, that'll conclude it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this type of content, make sure to like, subscribe, hit the bell, do all that cool stuff. I'm Yellowfin. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.